Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I, I hope you're having a great time wherever you are. Because um, we're going to listen to the word. I'm going to give you something here from heaven. Now, the, the thing that's important about us as sons of God here on the earth, remember the basic premise he says. He says, if do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then we know that our soul, our body, I mean our soul, our, our will and emotions and mind, everything is getting transformed to be in the very image of who we already are in the spirit as sons of God. So we're, we're, our mind, our, our emotions are, are being changed to be his emotions. And we can say we're going from hate to love, but it's not in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's more in the power of God. Remember, the kingdom of God is not in word. It's in power. And the power is the power to change. The power to bring forth something that's alive out of something that was dead. So in our soul, in the area of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, our soul produced a lot of different kind of fruits. And some of the fruits... And you know about fruits, it talks about the fruit of the spirit and the fruit of the flesh. But even in, the, in, in our soul, before God starts moving, it's like our good is only nothing. It's just not really good. Our goodness, our, our gentleness, our kindness. The, the, these fruits are just short-lived. But when he manifests his image, his likeness, his life in our soul, then our soul comes alive with an eternal kindness, an eternal fruit of the Spirit. This is pretty cool. And this is what is happening to us, this very end generation. Now, we don't have all of our eschatology and all of our religiosity together in the sense of knowing everything that's going to happen. All we know is what's going on within us. And the thing is, that it's going on within you and other sons of God around the earth that it's not going on necessarily with other parts of the body of Christ that have yet to come into the reality that Jesus is one with them. He's one in them. And that reality then brings us to the truth that as he's one with us, so we're one with him. And so there's a lot of simplicity to this that we need to understand. Because somebody would say, well, I'm one with God. Well, then why don't you do this and do that and do this and do that and do this and go, go into hospitals and heal everybody and raise the dead and walk on. You know, let me tell you something, sons. You don't have to prove to anybody that you're a son. You don't have to prove to it at any rate. You don't have to do any miracles, any signs, any wonders. You don't have to prove to anybody. As long as you know that you know that you know, that satisfies the Holy Spirit. The only reason Jesus had to make a show of who he was as Son of God was to draw the world to him, suck it all in, put it on the cross, and put it all to death. So that as he rose up, a new creation could come forth and be birthed. I want to go into the book of Romans chapter 8. And uh, do, there we go. It's a little dark up there. All right, here we go. Romans chapter 8. And, and uh, some of it's on the screen. Some of it I'm going to read. I'm reading out of the Weist New Testament, which as far as we have seen is the most accurate translation of the Greek into English words. English words. So starting with verse 14. Is that what we got up there? Okay. As many as are being constantly led by God's Spirit, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery again with resulting fear, but you received the Spirit which places you as adult sons. <clears throat> Every time we want to talk about <coughs> being sons, <coughs> we have to remember that the revelation of sonship that the Jews had when the Holy Spirit was poured out, <coughs> the church was birthed, they knew that they knew that they knew. 
that they were sons of God. Jews have an identity as being sons of God, totally of the flesh. But when the Holy Spirit came down upon them and the Lord filled them with himself, they knew they were sons of God. But it's very difficult to try to translate that sonship from the Spirit into the natural, into the normal man, into the normal Jew man. All right? And so they wrote about it. Every apostle wrote about their identity as sons, as the most important thing. Now, when I say most important thing, here again, I'm coming from the Spirit of the Lord. I'm coming from heaven, and I'm saying this to you. That everything here is already passing away. It's passing away while you're in it. It's passing away from the standpoint of heaven. It's already gone. What is your life? As the scripture says, it's but a vapor. Our consciousness is, is, is bound up in sense knowledge of, of feeling and hearing and tasting and touching. And our thoughts are all bound up in, 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 in areas that are really so short-lived, they have no value at all. You know, it, it's amazing. You talk about the scripture where the Lord says that it is the spirit that makes alive the flesh actually profits nothing. Now, this is difficult to understand without looking at it and without understanding from the position of the Spirit of God, from God's mind. So here, in the explanation, we will expand a little bit about the mind of Christ in us to see and understand here we are in the world. We're not of this world. Look at that scripture again. As many as be constantly led by God's spirit, these are the sons of God. He says these are the sons of God. These are the sons of God. It doesn't say these are the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the sheep of the shepherd. But those that are constantly led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Now, when I think about you as a son of God, I think about you from an eternal standpoint. I think about you from before the foundation of the universe. Before the earth was created, before the universe was created, I think about you according to the, what the Word of God says, what the Spirit of God within me tells me, is that we exist in eternity. This place down here is a... Vapor. But because of our sense knowledge, it seems like, oh boy, if there's something I'm hoping for in the future, maybe there's something I want to go on a vacation, or, I, or I've got to, uh-oh, go to the job on Monday morning. <laughs> I'm going, uh, or I'm going, yay! You know? And so I'm waiting, and I'm waiting. And then we get to the vacation, psh, it's over. We get to the job, psh, it's done. Everything's fast, okay? Even the kids today, even the kids today, little kids today, you know, 8, 9, 10, 12 years old, they're going, wow, everything's going so fast. It's all going so fast. And, you know, they're running around little circles like that going really fast, but they're aware of the fact that everything is moving faster. Why? <clears throat> if the Lord hadn't shortened the days... It would be possible that even the very elect should fall away. Fall away from real faith. Shorten the days, okay? So if I take, uh, take this time, it's this long, and I shorten it, it's the same amount of stuff is going on in that time, but the time is short. It goes from 12 hours to 8 hours. Same amount of thing going on inside, but the time is short. That's what's happening to the earth. That's what's happening to the universe. Now, there's a big connection between our physical bodies and the universe, and we'll get to that. Maybe some of you have already got it from the Lord, but I'm just going to, I'm just here to explain things. I'm just here by the Holy Spirit to help you understand a little bit more of who you are and who we are on the earth. Why we have an end time generation. Why the Lord is moving through us, and maybe our brothers and sisters over in this other church or this other place, maybe they're not getting it yet. Well, that's up to God. But what we're getting, he wants us to edify one another. Because the fact is that we have come into one mind and one accord.
We've come into the unity of the faith realizing that it's not even our faith. It's his. His faith that he's put into us. So they that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Here the scripture is talking to you about who you are eternally. Now this body is going to get changed. And this soul is going to get so changed that it's going to be like a, a clear membrane of living being that the Spirit of God can move right out through. It's going to be an express image of the Spirit. Now the soul is amazing. It was, it was for the cause of the soul that God paid the price with his blood to purchase the soul. See, born again, we weren't purchased to be born again. We were born again by the Spirit of God, restored back to eternal life, what we had with God before the foundation of the universe. But, but the soul, once it came into the earth, it came into a place that it would exist forever. It needed to be purchased from the enemy. And this was the soul of the sons of God. So the Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit. That's in the next scripture. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery with any fear, but you received the spirit who places you as adult sons. Received the spirit. Born again. Born of the word. Born of the spirit. Born of God. And Val talked about it uh, last week or the week before, which was absolutely amazing, about the same action of the Spirit of God hovering over the seed, impregnating Mary, and the same thing, the Spirit of God hovering over the Word that went forth, bringing forth creation. And same thing with you, born of the Spirit. The Spirit of God came. And quicken the seed, an eternal seed that came into us in Adam before the creation of the universe, before Adam. An eternal seed. And God's doing the same thing. As he birthed Jesus in the flesh, think about this, he birthed you also. He birthed you also. A new creation. Now, for those of you that are are very intensely listening to these messages. Here's a doorway to a realm of revelation that will change a lot of things in your soul life and your body life. And that has to do with the oneness. Okay, the oneness between the Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus. Now when we talk about the blood of Jesus, we talk about a physical thing. Now, think about this. Here the Spirit of God hovered over Mary and impregnated her. He transformed himself into a holy sperm. In that sperm was a physical blood that became the blood of the body of Jesus. Now, you, you were born again. You were born again. Same way Jesus rose up from the dead, you rose up. It says, it says that he was raised from the dead by the everlasting covenant, which is the blood. So here we have physical blood, here we have the spirit of God. There's a oneness between the two. A place where the, holy, where the spirit world becomes one with the physical world, and that is through the blood of Jesus. We were born of that we were born of the blood of Jesus. The unity between the spirit and the blood. That's what we were born of. So you can take that a little bit and, and ask the Lord to show you some more about the oneness. Because one of the things God is doing with us as he reveals his oneness with us is bringing us into a threefold manifestation of oneness. One oneness has to do with his oneness with all of his body. Everyone that's named the name of Jesus and has become spiritually born again, he is one with them. Before the cross, he became one with everyone that was dead. He became one with all men all the way back to Adam to bring them all to death. 
bring them all into a conclusion so that when the resurrection life came forth, for he was brought again from the dead by the blood of the everlasting covenant, the spirit and the blood together quickened him into the new creation where he became the firstborn of many brethren. We have not received a spirit which places us as adult sons wherein we cry out, Father. The Spirit himself is constantly bearing witness with our spirit that we are God's sons. And since sons we are heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. We'll make sure I get the same thing. <laughs> joint heirs with Christ. That we suffer with him. We have suffered with him. Do you know that you've already suffered with him? What part? Well, he said, well, I haven't suffered anything for Christ. Yes, you did. Well, I, I, I don't know. I, I haven't had any persecution because of being a Christian. Yes, you have. Because the truth is, you were crucified with Christ. In other words, all that he suffered... You shared in. Oh, well, I didn't feel that. Oh, I don't, I don't know how that could work. Because God is bigger than you. He, he, he's, he's greater than you are. Now, just because you don't feel that and you don't know that, the thing is, what he says is, believe it. You were crucified with Christ. And now you're alive. But it's not you. It's Christ who's alive in you. So I say to you, maybe if you've ever been in this world and you've had some suffering for Christ, maybe you were preaching the gospel somewhere and uh, they threw bricks at you. You know, I know, I know, my first, my, well, one of the first operations of suffering with Christ was preaching the gospel in a, in a place in America, and I was hitchhiking around preaching the gospel, and I got beat up and left for dead out on the highway. Well, I can tell you this, I didn't feel a thing except the Holy Spirit. Once I first got hit on the head, that was the last I felt anything until I got completely healed. Now, so to somebody else, they can say, well, that's suffering for Christ. Well, I'm going to tell you what, Jesus already suffered for me. And he says that I've suffered with him, that I died with him on the cross. What did I die to? I died to everything that was of the curse, everything that was of death. I died to it. And now I'm alive. But it's not even me. It's Christ that's alive in me. Do you like Christ's personality through me? Well, this is what you got. <laughs> I mean, I like Christ's personality through Val. I mean, he's so sweet and so wonderful and so gentle and kind. And I'm, I'm somewhat different than that. But you know what? You are too. But it's Christ in you that's alive. He's the life. He's the life. This is the truth. I love it when Jesus sat there and said, I tell you the truth. The truth is this. Either he's alive or you are still in your sin and you're pathetic. But he is alive and you're no longer in your sin and you're not pathetic. You're born again and you're a son of God and the Father is moving right through you to change you into the full image of Jesus. <laughs> so you have suffered with him. I like Paul says, I've come to a reasoned conclusion that the sufferings of the present season are of no weight in comparison to the glory which is about to be revealed on us. See, right now, it's like you and I can recognize one another when we talk. And maybe I've never even met you. But because God has quickened you into sonship, brought you into that adult sonship, and brought that awareness of adult sonship to you, then we begin to talk and share, and all I'm doing is help illuminating what's already inside you. What you're doing is just illuminating what's inside me. It's like we're not even trying. We're not teaching one another. We're not trying to exhort one another. We're not trying to edify. We're just, we're just, it's just God's life flowing through us, and we all of a sudden realize we're not alone. <laughs> There's sons of God coming up like a crop all over the world, coming up in the souls of men. 
I'm going to go on here. Because this glory, no problem. I got to go back again, again, okay? Okay, so here you are in, you got your body, and you've got your family, and you've got your friends, and you've got your job, and you've got this and that, and all of these things in the outer life. And I was talking to a lady this morning, and I saw that she was quite burdened in her mind, and she wasn't able to enter into worship. And I went over to her, and I said, you know something? The problem that you're having is that, very simple, think about this. If your heart stopped right now, would you care about all of those things that are burdening you down? I mean, are you going to be, you know, your heart stops and phew, you float out of your body? Are you going to care about your kids? Are you going to give a care about the money problem you got? Are you going to care about your body, your physical body that's got some problems? Are you going to care about any of those things? And she looked at me and all of a sudden she got it. We have eternal life. To care for these things is, is, is not part of God's plan. It's not God's part of nothing to do. God wants nothing to do with this stuff. What does he say in the scripture? Cast all your care upon him. Cast all your care upon him. He cares for you. What do you mean he cares for you? He cares that you be free from all this stuff. Now, we got tons of stuff going on. You know, I don't know, some of you older, got, all my kids are grown and married and they got all kinds of things going on in their lives and, and good things, bad things, all kinds of stuff. And then the grandkids and then all these other things. And then my dog died and all this kind of stuff. Hey, guess what? If I would think about it, if I would stop my heart right now today, be gone. None of this would make any matter because whew, that's what our life is on the earth. All right, now. I come from heaven. I'm coming into the earth through this body. I'm a son of God. I'm not of this place, but I'm in this place. And maybe all this awareness of time that has to do with this place is working on me. And maybe I'm going to be here for 70 years, 80 years, and I'm going to do normal things like the people of the earth. Why? So that in every way I can be a testimony. In every way I can be a testimony that this life is that fast. That God does everything he says he would do in the Bible. That everything that Jesus died on the cross for, he wants to live in you. What did he do? All of the curse... What is the curse? If you don't know what the curse is, do your homework. Wake up out there. Do your homework. What is the curse that came on Adam? Jesus put it all to death, destroyed its power, and brought in resurrection life to us. What are the things that are of the curse? Well, basically, I can tell you this. Poverty is a curse. Poverty mentality is a curse. Sickness, disease, infirmity, those are all part of the curse. None of that has a right to be with us. It doesn't have a right to be with you. When's the last time you, you were sitting out in your yard uh, and, and, you're, and you're sitting there, or maybe you don't have a yard, you know, a lot of people don't even have yards. Okay, well, that's good. What if you were sitting in your living room and all of a sudden a big snake comes slithering in on the floor and you go, huh, uh, 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 and you look at the snake, uh, you're just going to let it hang out? Go get it some lunch? No? Well, some people go, woo, ah, woo, but you know what? Sons of God, you know what you do? Get out of here, you snake. You've got no place in my life. You've got no place in my house. And if he doesn't move quick enough, get the sword out, get the shovel out, and chop his head off. Don't give him any place. That's the power. We don't have, the devil has no rights. The curse has no rights on us. We are sons of the living God to live free. Now why? Because Jesus lives. It's his life in us. It's his life in us. Now I ask you, do you think he wants to live in a life that's still full of burdens of the curse that he already suffered and died for? Did you get that? Did you get that? Boy, when I listened to 
believe it. Well, God's trying to teach me something with this sickness. So I'm not going to tell you what he's trying to teach you. He's trying to teach you to die and get resurrected so you know what you're talking about. <laughs> now, hey, I'm not just blowing smoke. I live this. I've been, I've been living this for years. And I'm saying... I'm giving it to you. I'm not teaching you something today. I'm giving you something today. You know? And you know, some of the guys said to me, he said, well, I don't know the devil. Every time I talk to the, you know, I say, well, I want to believe for God. And I want more of God. And I want some God. And, and he gets this voice and it says, you're just being greedy. You're just being selfish. I want to tell you something. This is what the master said. Whoever will give up anything for my sake and the sake of the kingdom, I'll multiply it back again. And you know what? He said, lands and business and wives and children and anything. Because everything here is short. What is your purpose to be here? It's the same purpose Jesus did. Who raised up sons of God. You know, he had two main purposes. Well, after going to the cross, he going to the cross, destroy the works of, of sin. So in another context, he came to destroy the works of the devil. So as the body of Christ began to grow throughout the last 2,000 years, he brought in the gifts of the Spirit, and the gifts of the Spirit were there to destroy the works of the devil. And that's what you do. Just by your existence. Now, what do I need to do? Exist as a son. Be a son. Just to be a son. You don't have to do anything. Jesus is just walking around. Just walking around. And I saw one place there in Mark and it said that they all crowded in on him. You know we've read one place where a lady touched him and he healed her. Well it said the whole crowd just wanted to touch the hem of his garment. Because he was. He wasn't doing something. He was being something. You know that being something is greater. I was, I was watching this guy on TV the other day. A uh, famous uh, martial arts guy and a, a movie producer and, 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 I don't know, 25, 30, 40 movies, I don't know, and a famous guy around the world. I'm not going to mention his name because I'm praying for him to get saved because he's still on the planet. But he made this big eulogy and he showed all of these things that he had done and then he showed this award. And this award was from Guinness World Book that he was the guy that did the most action stunts of any living actor and he said and I am so proud of myself and I'm so glad that my my children will be proud of me and my grandchildren and, and I'm so proud of myself and I went boy this guy really needs to get saved he doesn't even know he's dead can you imagine being proud of yourself from some bunch of stupid stuff that's the way the world is. The pride of life runs in the world. We're set free from that because we know, whoo, it's over in a heartbeat, gone. No care. Well, what about your legacy? It's over too. Now, <laughs> you ready for this? Let's go into the next one. Now watch this. The concentrated, undivided expectation of the creation. Big words. Concentrated, undivided. That means you, I'm staring at this camera, concentrated, undivided, camera, concentrated, undivided expectation of the universe is patiently awaiting the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subject to futility. Futility is vanity. You remember Solomon, uh, 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 Ecclesiastes in Solomon, he wrote Ecclesiastes, vanity of vanity, everything's vanity of vanity. He like, because he would look at the work and all this work and all this production and all this action and then it was worthless, really worthless. What does a man do if he does all this work and then he gives it over to his kids who's a bunch of idiots who can't take care of it? It's all worthless. It's called vanity. You know? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. The creation was subject to vanity. Brought into subjection to vanity when man fell. The creation is now waiting for the revealing of the sons of God. The creation 
did not do this voluntarily, but on account of God who put it under subjection upon the basis of keeping it in the realm of hope. <clears throat> that the creation itself will also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the liberty of the glory of the sons of God. Now, <clears throat> what about you is corruptible? Hmm. Born of the Spirit, born of the incorruptible word of God. Hmm. So that means spiritually you can't be, you're not corruptible. Purchased, your soul was purchased by the blood of Jesus that continually operates in cleansing and purging everything that is not of God from you. So that's not corruptible. Oh, wait a minute. Looky there. Oh, yes. Corruptible. I didn't always look like this. I used to be handsome and young and had hair, all that stuff. But, you know, it corrupted. Wow. So here we have an entire universe that according to all the science can, can figure that it's dying. It's corrupting. It's, that's what corruption is. It's just the process of oxidation to where it, it, it starts with something, turns into nothing, goes from carbon to carbon, from atom back to Adam. Oh, wait a minute. How about that one? You guys ever been to a funeral? Okay, and dust to dust and ashes to ashes. Blah, blah, blah. You know, look at this thing. You got one of these, okay? Sons of God are neither male or female. They're not American. They're not Romanian. They're not Indian. They're not Chinese. They're not Africans. We're out of the flesh. The flesh is already gone. That's not our identity. Now, while I'm in this body, I have to relate to the people. So maybe it's Romanian people. Well, they look at me and say, you're, you're not a Romanian. Okay, well, uh, what am I? You're, I don't know, something Irish, Irish, arr, Irish, all right? Or you're, you know, I'm definitely not African, but you, you, or Indian. I get over to these places, and after about two weeks over there, you know, I have to look in a mirror to realize I'm this white guy from America. Because I identify with them so much. But this flesh is already dead. It's already dead. It's already corrupting. Look at this. Look at this. And the spirit, the, the creation is patiently waiting for the revealing of the sons of God. Which comes from the spirit out through the soul. And it's, it's been subject to hope until this revelation. Let me see if we got it up there. All right. Delivered from the bondage of the sons of God. Uh, delivered from the bondage into the liberty. All right. Now, for, let me see if I got this up. Okay. So the whole creation, look at this. The whole creation. Now, this is not God's creation of the heavens. This is not God's creation of you in the spirit. And this is not God's creation of what he's changing your soul into. This is the physical creation. This thing is connected to this physical universe. Paul had a wrestling match with his own flesh. Oh, oh, what I want to do, I can't do. And what I don't want to do is what I do. And I find this law in my body, in my members, that makes me do this sin stuff that I don't want to do. But the law in my mind is the law of Christ. Flesh. This body. Now, we know that God's quickening it. We know that he says that he's going to, in the moment, in the twinkling of eye, Quicken it into the likeness of his mortal body, or his, his glorified body. So we know the whole creation groans and travails together to this moment. But we ourselves also have the first fruits of the Spirit. We ourselves also are groaning within ourselves. A sedishly, great word, a sedishly, hmm, boy, Patiently waiting for the full realization of our adult sonship. 
at the redemption of our bodies. Waiting. These bodies are connected to the universe. And there are a thousand stories that the carnal people have. You know, they think that, you know, when somebody dies and they're good people, they go up and they become a star. <laughs> a physical star in a physical universe. This physical universe and this physical body are linked in. And as this physical universe is groaning and moaning like a woman given birth to a new creation, so within us, out through our soul, there is a groaning and a moaning bringing forth a new creation. At this time, on the planet, first time since the first church, sons of God have come into reality. At the same time, the destruction of all of the curse is made manifest in their bodies. But the bodies are not glorified yet. But simultaneously with the life that is within us of God bringing forth his life, simultaneously the universe is being shaken. The earth is groaning. And the whole universe is groaning within because see from within the life of God, the seed of promise. See, the seed of promise was put into the natural universe. It was left in hope until the time of the sons of God would be revealed. Pretty cool, huh? Try this. Wherever you are. <laughs> well, some places, I know some places there are not hardly any creation left. It's just all dirt, dirt and mud and rocks. <laughs> Get down on your knees. This is your body. Put your hands down and begin to release life. Just like you would when you're laying hands on somebody. Release life into creation. See if the Holy Spirit doesn't just move right through you to bring and water the hope that's in creation. You're connected. You're connected to it. See, as sons of God, the things that he has for us, I just think, okay, when we get to heaven, this is going to be this way and that way. That's wonderful, but we're not there yet. Woo, what are you doing now through us here? It's not limited to man's understanding. It's not limited to religious walls. It's not limited to anything. It, the destruction of the devil and bringing many sons into glory. You are sons of God. Your soul is being transformed to be in that exact image. And your body is going to be quickened in the moment in a twinkling of ear like that. But until that time, he wants to manifest resurrection life. Life in that flesh. How do you do it? Lord, how do we do the works of God? <laughs> Believe on the word that has been sent. Believe on him who has been sent. Amen. Father, I thank you right now. Increase of life. Increase of every realm of prosperity, both in, in soul and in body. Prosperity. Not worldly consumption of materialism, but the prosperity of God to keep the gospel moving around the world. The finances to keep it going around the world. Thank you, Lord, for the increase that as the sons begin to act as sons, that the manifestation of life moves out through them beyond anything a gift of the Spirit has done before. Thank you, Lord. Walking every day, being led by the Holy Spirit every day. Grace ministering life. 
Amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hold it.